All right, so here we are in iNav. I'm just going to plug in the USB into the flight controller. And I've already soldered up the Skywalker, which came with the FX61, using the same ESC. Now, with this, with the um, the Maytech flight controller, the F the, the F four eleven where with the F four eleven flight controller to flash the firmware, there's a button on top. You have to hold that down while you plug in the USB cable, and when you do that, you'll see a red you'll see a red light appear, which tells you it's in bootloader mode. Right, so I'm in bootloader mode. I want to go over into the firmware flasher and we're going to choose the board which is the Maytech F11 wing which is that one there and we will select the latest firmware and flash that alright so just a little correction there regarding the the type of firmware for the F411 Maytech flight controller. There's a, if you look in iNav, there's quite a number of different types of F411. Um, obviously, see if with my F, FX61, I've got I've I've got a uh, a Maytech air speed sensor coming for it, and what I found out is the different types of firmware for that flight controller right you need if you're going to run the the Maytech uh, airspeed sensor you're going to need to install the F411 RSSI um, firmware not just the standard F411 firmware which I've selected here or else you won't be able to get the the airspeed sensor operating I'm not sure if it works with other different airspeed sensors I'm, I'm assuming it probably does but with the Maytech one that I've got on order um, it needs to be running the F411 RSSI firmware. I've selected no reboot sequence. I've selected flash on connect. I don't know about that one. Uh, full chip erase. So we'll load the firmware online and we'll flash that across once it boots up. Righto, so we can flash that now. So we'll click the flash button and it's erasing. We'll just wait till it erases and it should start flashing, which it is. Give that a moment. Alright, programming successful. Um, it's come up saying no response from bootloader, but that's only because it's connected and I've selected to connect on reboot. Okay, now once once that's been flashed, you'll see the you'll see the blue blue light flashing now. Red light solid. Which is what it will be if you um, try to flash it and you don't press the bootloader button on the board. That's how it will look and you will try to flash the firmware and it won't flash. So if it does that, hold the button down before you plug the USB cable in. So let's go into the welcome area and we'll do a, a quick little setup here. Righto, default values. I'm going to set up an airplane. So I'm going to click that. It's rebooting. Okay, it's telling me now mixer is not configured. So we'll head into the mixer. Okay, mixer platform configuration multi-rotor. Well, we don't want that. We want airplane. Flying wing, that's good. We'll just click load and apply that. Save and reboot. Okay, it's telling me now in red here, PWM motor is disabled, motors and servos will not work. Use outputs tab to enable. Okay, so we'll head over to the outputs tab. We'll click that. Configuration, we have to turn this on, enable motor and servo output. I'm just leaving the ESC protocol as standard on this. because I'm not too sure just at this stage, I can change all this later on. If we scroll down to the motors, we've got ports 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 for the servo outputs for the ailerons. So everything's looking good there. We'll save and reboot. Okay, 
so that section's done we've pretty much got a basic setup now but what I want to do I want to do some default presets this is not needed if you don't want it but if you're totally unsure like me and fairly new to set these up I would suggest do it this way I set up my um, my flying wing Z84 with this preset here but this one the closest I can find is the right wing right wing mini drag so if you you've got a lot of options but because the wingspan of the Phantom FX61 is about one and a half meters in length this is the closest it comes to the right wing mini drac this plane settings default settings will set with an 8x6 propeller I mean I'm gonna have bigger than that anyway so it's not going to be perfect running a 1400 kV motor again that's a lot lower kV than what I've got I'm powered with a 4S LiPo which is what I am gonna with um, weight above 1200 gram so we'll apply that you can tweak all this of course these are just base settings save and save and reboot again and we're almost done just with the basic setup here uh, the ports I'm gonna leave till later only because I haven't got anything else on the board yet so on the configuration even though I'm gonna run a GPS I'm gonna set all that up later as well same with the pitot tube I'll do all that later board alignment not sure with that so I'm leaving all that battery capacity even the same I'm not sure with that I'm gonna leave everything as it is just at this stage it can be all changed later on okay my fail safe I'm gonna change the fail safe so that it returns to home I don't know why they don't do that as default anyway that's how I do it return to home in fail safe save and reboot um, there is actually something else I want to do uh, it's going to be not the PID advanced tuning we head into here and we go to the RTH landing settings you can do all this later on too but I just like to set this basic because it's important to return to home and don't want to forget return to home altitude here they've got 10 meters that's 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 ridiculous you'll fly into the nearest tree so set that to at least 5,000 centimeters or 50 meters climb before return to home um, not too sure with that one at the moment do I want it to climb before it returns to home I think you would wouldn't you you wouldn't really want it to climb on its way back home anyway we'll check that out later as well uh, land after return to home I don't like it to land never land I'd rather it come back to me and just hover in the sky I can bring it down the loiter radius is at 50 meters, so that's fine by me. Um, I think that's pretty much it, just to start things off. Yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll save and reboot that. Okay, so I'm just in the ports tab here. I've just connected up the GPS. So what we've got to do, UART2 is what we need and we need to come across to sensors here and activate the GPS and I'm setting mine to 57600 save and reboot and next we'll come across here to configuration was it configuration I think it was or was it configuration here um, down to GPS and we've got to toggle that on. U blocks I'm choosing. Ground assistance, that's good. Auto detect, ground assistance type auto detect. I'm not sure about that, so I'm just keeping that disabled at this stage. Uh, save and reboot, I think. We'll just have a quick. Now, a way to test that if I connect. If I connect the flight controller up to a battery. Well, it's showing we've got GPS here now, so that's a good sign. We'll just connect to a battery. GPS has power and it's turned blue. The GPS light up the top here has turned blue. So that shows it's all good to go. Navigation is safe, it's still red because we're not outside. 
And if we go to GPS tab, and then we do a bit of a scroll down, we can see the total messages it's getting is for, you can see it moving, so it's showing that we're getting information. So it's a basic setting set up. Once, once it's all put in the plane, and I've connected up everything ready for its first flight, we'll go through all this again and make sure everything's um, spot on. Uh, receiver haven't connected it up yet so I'm not gonna nothing you can do with that so there's no point even playing with that on-screen display well if you want to play with that you can but I'm not going to you can set all that up I'm just gonna leave that as is so I'm pretty much done there that's my basic setup for the FX 61 I'll disconnect and we'll come back with the next step